Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Let's jump right into what's happening with the Spurs bread and butter play, the pick and roll. Without Ibaka in the lineup, you can see that in games 1 and 2, the Spurs had no problem generating easy points. However, once the Thunder benched Collison and played Ibaka his regular minutes, this play has been rendered very ineffective. Let's figure out why. Looking back at Game 1, you can see they wanted to attack Perkins by having his man screen the ball. He had no hope of keeping up with Parker, and Collison wasn't the threat to come over and contest. They also knew if they could screen for Parker with Collison's man, Parker would have no trouble blowing by Collison. With KD at the 4, the Spurs could invite Adams to hedge high on a pick and roll for Manu, and they weren't afraid in the slightest at Durant coming over to block a shot. Even when Brooks went with Perkins and Adams in there at the same time, the Spurs still targeted Perkins so Parker could get right by him easily, and Adams is late having to rotate from the free throw line. Looking at Game 4 while it was still sort of a game, you can get a sense of exactly who was involved in defending the pick and rolls and how efficient they truly were. At the top is Ibaka, who really caused problems for the Spurs when he was directly involved by defending the ball screener. With Ibaka on splitter, he can afford to get out of position and not worry about his man as a threat. Here Ibaka hedges and forces Parker the other way towards the middle, however they get KD to almost help one pass away, but Kawhi can't knock down the shot. The Spurs need to be more clever to exploit Ibaka's instincts to get out of position. On this screen and roll, they flash Duncan to the high post and get a gorgeous back door cut when Ibaka was too concerned about hedging on the ball screen. But Ibaka was simply causing too much havoc as none of the Spurs wanted to drive at him and this forced some very uncharacteristic turnovers. Ibaka likes to be aggressive on the hedge, but for some reason, the Spurs were willing to pop out for the three rather than short roll to the middle of the lane for a four on three opportunity. Now let's look at Steven Adams when he was involved defending the pick and roll. He actually held the Spurs to their lowest efficiency. Adams is a bit of a monster, seven feet tall and extremely mobile. And if they're going to screen Manu with his man, Ginobili will have some problems getting by him. However, if they can pull him out far enough and get Duncan to roll to the elbow, the Spurs will be able to open up good shots. If the Spurs are going to have success in the pick and roll, it's got to be with Kendrick Perkins guarding the screener. By far, he had the worst defensive rating of any of the Thunder players in these plays. When Parker crosses over away from the screen, you can see that Perkins is way too slow to help contain, and it doesn't help that he's walking on defense. This collapses the Thunder defense and opens up a good look for Kawhi. Here's another example where Perkins sinks too low to be truly effective on the screen, and while he does do a nice job to contest, when Durant is playing the four, it allows Duncan to grab the rebound and put the ball back in. The key for Coach Popovich is to stop having Ibaka's man out on top spotting up. If they can get guys like Diaw to the corner, Perkins is too slow to recover, forcing Ibaka to help, opening up the kick for the wide open shot. 